Hi everyone, it's me with you again once more. Now I'm with Begonia Radrobius, who is the one of the professors of this university. And I'm really pleased about meeting with you. How are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, <laughs> for sure. Uh, could you tell us about a little bit about yourself? So um, I'm senior lecturer in translation studies at the University of Portsmouth. I did my PhD in translation studies, and I've also been a translator and interpreter. Yeah, sure. It's really interesting to know about your research, somehow different to our PhD students as well. Okay, so uh, my research has to do with uh, translation training and the gap from university to, to, to the professional world. So I've always wanted to investigate, to research what's needed, uh, what skills our students need, when they move it to the professional world. And, and that's what I've written about in, in my articles. You know, what kind of skills do we need if we want to do research like you? Um, well, I, I would recommend that, um, that you go out and find out, first of all, a big question. Everyone doing a PhD needs to think of a question. So what am I going to try and answer? Um, obviously you need to do all the background research, literature review, etc. But then um, I'm very much a practitioner, so my research needs to be practical. And this is why um, in the past I've visited translation companies just to find out um, what they do that's, you know, useful. What kind of challenges and struggles you face during the, doing your research? Uh, challenges, to be honest, I, I'm, I've been very lucky because I've um, been able to identify the companies that were happy to collaborate with me. Mm. Um, and so I would say that uh, mainly the challenges are administrative, um, you know, the sort of paperwork and you need to prepare before you actually get into, you know, the research you action. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the learning languages. Okay. What is the most difficult about learning a language? Um, well, uh, I think it's a personal, it's a very personal experience, isn't it? Learning languages. I um, I think you need to have an interest first mm -hmm. and even a passion, uh, like with anything that we learn. If there's no interest, it's going to be very hard to learn it properly. Um, and so if you've got the interest and the passion, of course, some of us might be better at languages than maths, for example. <laughs> and those of us uh, who are not so good at languages will have to work uh, harder. But I think the first thing that you need is, is, like I said, interest, passion, and then dedication be my third. Uh, sure. What is the most important while learning a language? What is the most important? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm, I was talking about personally, but also teachers are able mm -hmm. So to have an enthusiastic teacher mm -hmm. will give you the key to, to success. Um, you know, if you, if you make your lessons interesting, you can inspire your students. And, as we know, we sometimes laugh what we do because of an inspirational teaching. Yeah, that's true. Point. So that's, mm. that's key. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using artificial intelligence like <laughs> yes, so. be during our classes, during learning process, as well as during some doing some research? Right. So artificial intelligence is everywhere and, you know, in, in the languages, well, and translation and interpreting um, is going to be more and more widely used. So we need to make sure that new generations are excellent at their native language. I would say that it is very easy to use machine translation these days and we can become lazy. Um, and so we need expert human linguists, um, language specialists, who will be able to still correct the machine and, and prove that 
uh, the human skills, the language skills that we learned when we initially learned the language are still there. Um, mm. So that, you know, intercultural communication takes place mm -hmm. and there's still a role for, for humans. Yeah, sure. Do you use digital tools to learn language? Um, I don't actually. I, I always learn my languages face to face uh, okay. with teachers. I know there are many apps at the moment uh, that can teach you a language. I've even collaborated with one of these um, brands. I'm not going to give the name. It. Um, and basically, uh, many students are saying that they get to intermediate level with this app, for example, and they find that they cannot progress further. Mm. The reason being because they haven't got a human to explain the very detail of a grammatical aspect or uh, an idiomatic sentence or a saying. Mm. So I don't personally use them. I know it is practical for some people maybe who cannot have a teacher or cannot go to lessons, etc. What previous experience do you have of studying as a language? Uh, well, I've been involved with languages all my life. And, uh, my mother was an English teacher, so I was very lucky to have her as my first teacher. And then I've been a teacher myself, believe it or not, since the age of 14, when I was teaching the students that my mother did anything to teach. And uh, so I've got this vocation of being in touch with languages from the beginning. I also do French, Latin and Greek. So at um, some stages, I remember at university, I was teaching younger students Latin and English and French, for example. Mm. What is your favorite book? Ooh. My favorite book. And why do you like it? Ooh, really. Okay. Right. Well, coming from a Spanish background, I love reading literature in my native language. And I don't know if you've heard of the author from Chile, Isabel Allende. There, there is a translation of, of her book in English. It's called The House of Spirits. And it's about a generation of, of very strong women and, and they pass their skills from grandmother to mother to daughter. Oh, really? And it's a very nice, um, it's very well written. And even the names of the main characters have a meaning. And so, so yeah, that's the beauty of literature, isn't it? That you can get into the book and you can learn about the different, different personalities. So I would say that's one of my favorite books. Uh, could you also recommend us some theoretical books to do better research in terms of translation? Of course, um, I would recommend uh, Jeremy Monday yeah. introducing translation studies yeah. uh, because it gives you um, an overview of all the theories in translation and how different authors uh, use similar terms, but they give it another name. So, yeah. you know, different models and theories in translation that you would surely find interesting. Okay, and the next one, how can we activate our passive vocabulary? How can we add to be? Yeah, sure. Of uh, okay. Well, there's nothing like immersing oneself mm. in the country. I mean, I know that at the moment we're very lucky to be able to watch films with subtitles, so that helps you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that's a film. <laughs> that's not reality. So the best thing I would recommend anyone who's learning a language is to visit the country where the language is spoken, because you will also see. Uh, well, you see how words are used in, used in context, but you can also hear the accents that you might never have come across. And obviously that's an enriching experience. Sure. As a PhD student, I would like to ask one question as well. What is the most important thing while doing research? What kind of things should I take into account? Um, discipline. Mm. Yeah, especially if you're working or you know, if you've got other commitments, uh, you need to set aside time to research. Um, so maybe one day when we're not very busy mm. in, in the week, maybe the weekends, set aside time to say, right, today I'm going to read, I don't know, four articles and mm. I'm going to take notes. Uh, or today I'm going to start writing mm. my article. That's always very scary when we start writing. Sure. The writing process is difficult, but structuring your work, knowing when to meet your own deadlines, um, very important. I've always set my own deadlines in life. <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, that's why discipline is, is extremely important. 
Ah, and an accent thing just I want to ask. As a lecturer, as a professor, as a supervisor, you've already noticed some weakness points of students. And could you tell us about some mistakes of us? Uh, while doing research? Or? While you research, um, I think as a student, like I said, you need to be disciplined, you need to be curious. You remember what I was saying about the language, you need to have that interest mm -hmm. and that passion. Do not research something that you're not interested in. Mm -hmm because you're not going to have your mind and heart in it. Um, obviously, as supervisors, they can help you structure the work, they can guide you to the reading that you have to do. But I think it's a personal journey. I would say, try not to depend too much on your supervisors, your lecturers. Obviously, make the meetings that you have with them really useful, but, you know, just be disciplined and organized about your own research. So weaknesses, everyone's different and some people need more guiding than mm -hmm. others. So if you need guiding, ask. Yeah, that's the other thing. Don't be scared to ask. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, what are your tips for successful career, Mikey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, passion. Enthusiasm. Because sometimes we might work in an environment that, you know, is not the ideal environment. But if you've got passion for teaching, which I have, I mean, that's why, you know, I've got it in me that I want to pass information, then you can do well, whatever the obstacles. So, yeah, enthusiasm, passion, passing down knowledge to, of what you know. Mm, great. And um, your wishes to Uzbek students and teachers as well? Well, um, I'm very happy that, um, that than talking to you. I wish I could speak to you in person, but I hope that things, the advice that I've given you um, is, is useful. And obviously, I, I'm, one of my favorite sentences is never give up. So even when you think that things are not looking your way, uh, sometimes we need to just work harder and, and never give up on, on whatever um, you want to do in life, in your studies and your future life. So good luck with everything. Yes, thank you all. It was Begonia Rodriguez, professor from University of Portsmouth, England. Thank you. Thank you very much.